Hello again, my name is David Watts from Lenovo Press and I have with me today Tisha Jefferson. She is the Worldwide Segment Manager for Mission Critical Servers. How are you doing Tisha? How are you doing David? So today we're going to be talking about the new uh, Think System SR860. This is our 4U, 4 socket server, right Tisha? Yes it is. So tell me, um, who's the sort of customer that's going to get best value out of this system? Now this server is targeted for the mid-size to enterprise customers looking for price and performance in a server that scales from two socket to four socket with large amount of memory, large amount of storage, and GPU support. And the, and the sort of workloads then would be best suited for this machine? Uh, database analytics, database virtualization, and general purpose consolidation. Okay, great. So now we're going to go through the components in this video. Um, let's start at the front, and then we'll swing around the back, and then have a look inside, okay? So, Tisha, um, in the front of the system, um, we have um, on this side um, support for up to 16 two and a half inch drive bays. These are hot swap drive bays, right? Yes, and yeah. up to eight NVMe drives in right. any bay. Yeah, so um, you can mix, it, mix the drives as you wish, uh, so quite versatile there. Um, this particular system has got drive blanks, uh, that's why you're not seeing drives in this area here. Now, Tisha, on, the, on, the, on your side, uh, there's a variety of ports there too, right? Yes, this has two USB ports. And this one's a USB port 2.0, and actually also doubles as a management port. And this one is either a USB 2.0 or a 3.0. Yeah, right. Now, so the, the management capability is, uh, allows you to um, do, do local management. If you have um, the XClarity mobile app installed on a phone or a tablet, you can connect through a, a USB cable tethered to the system. And that allows you to do um, local management of the system. So it's quite a handy feature there. It yeah. is. But it doubles as a, as a regular USB 2 port as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, now next to those then, there's the, this is the basic, the regular um, display. This Sorry. is our front operator's panel yeah. here. Um, there's an option when ordered, you can actually get it with an LCD panel that you can pull out and gives you information such as the system status, um, networking information, system health information in it too. Right. So um, this, this particular unit, is, uh, this particular server has the, the regular uh, right. front panel. The connectors on that, sorry, the, the buttons, there's a power button on this side which doubles as a, the power light. Um, there's an additional um, LEDs for yeah. system control. Right, yeah. this, is the LC, this is the information LCD light here, LED yep. light here. Yep, so that when you press that, um, that button lights up blue, um, you can enable that remotely through XClarity Administrator to identify a system when you're working in, in, a, in a data center. You need to know exactly which system you're working on. That blue light will light up, and it also lights up a blue light at the back of the server as well. So you know which system you're working on when you go around the back of the right. system. Yeah. Helps out. Also, let's not forget about this information panel here. Yeah. This will contain your MAC address information here. Yeah, so if you need the IP address or MAC address of um, the XClarity controller, the service processor, um, out of the box, then this, this pullout will have that detail on it. on it. Yeah. All right, so that's the front components. Oh, I should point oh. out to the front VGA. Yeah. That's uh, a standard feature of this system. Uh, there is also, of course, a, a VGA port at the back as well. Right. But if you are wanting to do local management, like if you have a crash card in your data center, then the, the ports are there, um, standard for the system. All right, let's spin around the back. All right, let's. Okay. So, um, Power supplies, Tisha, you want to describe those? So it comes with two power supplies. It comes with 750, 1100, and up to 2000 watt power mm -hmm. supplies, two of those here. And those are hot swap and redundant, right? Correct, yeah. correct. They are hot swap and yeah. redundant. Right, so you can see the majority of the back is, the, is all these slots here. Um, there are a total of 11 slots. Yes. Plus the LOM adapter and the M.2 adapter correct. slots. In the back yep. of this. Marks. Now you can see here, um, we, we didn't mention it up front, that this server is quite similar, and when you see inside you'll see it, quite similar to the SR850, Correct. which is our 2U 4-socket four four server. Yeah. This is our 4U 4-socket four server. Correct. So a lot of the components, the lower half is very similar to the SR850, so if you're familiar with that server, you will then understand uh, the, the similarities there. Um, but the top um, is unique to this system, and that's where we offer GPU support. Yes. Right? We offer two 300 watt full length um, GPU support in this box, yep. um, such as the NVIDIA M60. Yeah, yeah. So um, the, these, these slots on this side are uh, built into the uh, system board. Um, there, is a, there are riser options available to you to, for, the, for the, the three slots in this area here. Um, and then uh, one more slot over here. The two slots on the, either end, these are the ones that um, act as riser slots 
to give you the connectivity to the, um, the slots on the top half Correct. of the server. And once we open up, you'll see how that all connects together. Right. All right. Um, there are ports here as well, Tisha? Oh, so we have management ports here. We have serial ports here too that we offer to it. Right, yep. So VGA and serial port is there, a management port, and then there are some additional USB ports there at the back. back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, and there's the ID button that I mentioned before, the ID button and uh, um, blue uh, LED. Um, that you mentioned in the front. Mentioned at the beginning, yeah. All right, so let's, that, that's, the, that's the back of the server. Let's spin it around and have a look inside the server now, shall we? All right. Okay. Easy to remove case, just like all our servers. So the top of the SR860 is the PCIe tray. Um, we have here two riser assemblies, PCIe riser assemblies, where the GPUs are, are installed in this case here. So let me re remove one of those. Um, easy to do. Of course, you do this with the power off. Um, so here we have here one of the riser assemblies. And you can see I've got one GPU installed. Um, the, the assembly has a, a fan attached to it for, for additional cooling. Um, and as Tisha mentioned, the, the GPUs we sought include, for example, the M60 GPU. Um, now, the, the, if I may just put that in for a moment, uh, you can see the, the, the connector here goes to um, the lower part of the server to those riser slots I mentioned. Um, and it's quite along this green connector here. And there are two, two variations we support. The one that's installed is, the, um, is this by 16 riser. So it has one by 16 slot for, for a GPU. Right. Um, you can see that I've, I've attached here the, the um, power cable that comes with the GPUs that provides the additional power needed for the high performance GPUs like the M60. Um, the, the other connector on, the, on this riser is, the, is a fan connector here. And then the whole, whole assembly gets, draws power from the system through this connector just here. Now, in addition to that, there is a, a 2 by 8 riser. That's this one here. So if you have need for full length by 8 uh, slots, then the SR860 gives you this capability with this riser card here. So this is part of the reason that some customers will actually want this box. You can actually get full length cards in the box. This is one of the few boxes we have in the portfolio that offers you this opportunity. Yeah, yeah, excellent. So those are the two choices for the, for the top um, slots. So I'm happy to put yeah. that over there and we'll remove this one as well. Again, this one comes out quite easily. The same, it's the same mechanism both sides, just to mirror one of the other. Uh, nothing more to it than that. Okay, so here now we have the, the mechanical port of the assembly, and to remove that, we lift this here and pull, hold it like so. And so this is just uh, sheet metal and some mechanical to lift it out. No electronics there. So then this is now the lower half of the server. Um, uh, Tisha, these processors, so these are our new Intel scalable processors here we have installed. So right. the, um, what, what we're looking here at here is the um, processors 3 and 4 um, and the, the memory that's supported with those processors. This server supports four processors total. The other two are actually underneath. Right. Yeah. And we'll show you where they go in, in a moment. Um, um, the server supports a total of four processors and a total of 48 DIMMs, right. 12 DIMMs per processor. Yeah, so for example, this supports up to three terabytes with 64 gig DDR3 true memory. Right, yep, DDR4. True. I'm sorry, true DDR4 D yes. memory. Yes, 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 very good. Okay, so this is the, the mezzanine tray, and let me remove that now to show you then what's under there. Actually, Do you want remove to this. Air? Yeah, let's take the hair bezel, hair bezel out first. Very good, thank you. Okay, so um, first of all, I'm gonna unplug the, this power connector. The two NVMe connections, you have to remove those. Okay. All right, David, don't forget to take out the uh, top power supply. That's right, yes. Um, the, the mechanism prevents you from removing the mezzanine tray and, uh, until you remove the top power supply. And you can see down here that there's this little lock symbol here. Um, there's a mechanical behind that, that that will prevent the handle from being lifted up lift it up until you remove the power supply. So if I simply just eject that slightly, then you can see now it has now released and now we can lift up and pull out, with all those cables clear, we can pull out the PCR, uh, sorry, the uh, CPU processor and memory tray. So let me put that back here, you can see. So this is processors three and four with this memory. Um, 
Let me move this back for you. This is where processes one and two would go. Right. Now, the, uh, for those of you on the video that are uh, observant, you'll notice that there are, in fact, no processes installed. So let's just imagine that there are two processes and memory installed here as well. Correct. Okay. Just between us, we'll just pretend that's there. All right. Um, so that's this portion here. Um, I would point out before I give this to you, Tisha, there, there are two NVMe connectors here. These are the ones that will drive the um, NVMe drives at the front, the front of the server. Correct. Um, uh, if you choose the, the AnyBay backplanes. Right. Um, right. So let's see what we've got here. We've got, some, uh, we've got six redundant fans. Correct. Um, N plus one redundant. So if one of them fails, the system will continue on. Um, at the front of the unit, in front of the, the fans, are the, the backplane assemblies where you can um, uh, upgrade the system with, the, with an additional backplane if you only start with eight drives. Right, so we have five backplane options in here. So we have a lot of combination of storage capabilities. Okay, yep. Now, um, let's go through then more of the internals. Um, Let's see. Okay, let's start with this, this here. This is the riser assembly that gives you three of the riser slots. Let me remove that. All right, it comes out like so. Oh, I managed to pull a cable as well. Okay, so Tisha, this is the um, ML2 riser slot uh, assembly, right. right? This is our ML2 riser slot here, which also gives you by uh, two by eight. Right. On so, the same riser, yep. but we have two other, like you mentioned, we have two other riser options that are available in this server. Yeah. So you can choose any of those three um, when you're ordering the system. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, next to that, this one here is the the um, LOM adapter. This one, uh, let me check here. This is the four port, uh, uh, looks like a one gig LOM. There are five other variations available um, for this server. 10 gig um, RJ45, 10 gig SFP, as well as the two port um, RJ45, one gig as well. It's a total of six different variations. Now, next to that, uh, Tisha, is the M.2 right, so M.2 adapter, right? So, yeah, we have two options for M.2. Basically, give you a local uh, boot drives here for faster boot. Mm -hmm. So we have the single and we have the dual. Yes. And why is it called dual there? Uh, because it actually has two on here. This is our design here. I'm not sure if you can see it. It's kind of small. Um, have two on here. Mm -hmm. Our design. Yeah. So the one we have installed is just a single. So it has one M.2 drive installed on the adapter. Um, that one there in Tisha's hands is the is the dual adapter. Yeah, and there's a variety of sizes that are available. Of, the of 32 yeah. 128 yeah. gig. Okay, um, we have an additional um, uh, slots here on the system board. We've got one adapter installed. Now I draw your attention um, to the the slots on either side. These are the riser slots um, that the, they're by 16 slots, and they're the ones that go up to the upper level right. slots for so GPUs, for example. So these are the two you mentioned these earlier. Are, yes, that's right. All right, then this little assembly here and this one here, these are the ones that provide the power to the upper tray, the upper tray to, to provide power to the GPUs and provide power to the additional fans on top there, all right? So there you have it. Um, this, is the, this is the Think System SR860. Tisha, thanks so much for your time. Thank you, David. Hope you found the video useful, and we'll see you later.